This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Um, we are going to the southern state of Oaxaca, in Mexico, where a deadly police crackdown against teachers has left at least eight people dead, more than 100 wounded. On Sunday, the federal police descended on the teachers, um, where they had set up blockades to protest against neoliberal education reform and the arrests of two teachers' unions' leaders last week on what protesters say are trumped-up charges. We're joined now by Gustavo Esteva, who is founder of University of the Earth in Oaxaca. That's Universidad de la Tierra. Uh, he's the author of a number of books, including New Forms of Revolution, has been a columnist for La Jornada. We started, in part one of this conversation, by you talking about the police opening fire. Um, do you know how many people are dead and wounded? And what are the activists saying on the ground, the teachers who are open fire on, and what is the state saying, Gustavo? Well, uh, we, the last report we had, it is nine people were literally executed, assassinated. We had 23 people disappeared. We have at least 21 arrested. We have 45 people in the hospital. We have more uh, of uh, 100 uh, wounded. Uh, this is the last report. Uh, at the beginning, the police uh, said that they had no firearms. Uh, finally, when we had in uh, Facebook lots of images of the police uh, shooting uh, in a very clear attack on the teachers, uh, they finally accepted that at the end uh, they brought people with uh, firearms. Uh, but it was a very concerted attack. It was a very bottle, bloody battle against the teachers. What exactly are the teachers calling for? In part one of our conversation, you talked about a different kind of education. But what exactly? What are they placing their bodies on the line for, risking death for? And how do you link this to other struggles? And would you link it um, uh, to the students, the student teachers who disappeared last year? Well, in, in several ways. First, the, the teachers are saying no to what they call uh, an educational reform that is not educational reform that is bringing basically useless instructions instead of education. The teachers had a whole plan for real education for the indigenous people of Oaxaca, and they are saying no to a reform that put many people uh, of teachers out of, of job. It is not privatization of education, but abandoning the education, particularly in indigenous areas. Then it is uh, the teachers are joined by the indigenous people protecting their education, real education for their children. But the teachers are also saying no to the so-called structural reforms. That basically means a change of ownership uh, and selling our territories. 40% of Oaxaca had been sold for 50 years concessions to private companies. And the people are resisting protecting their own territories because it is basically indigenous territories. And then they are saying yes to a real education and no to this kind of operation, dispossessing the people of their own land, their own territory. And this is, of course, connected with the case of Ayotzinapa, the 43 that we are still missing, because it is, again, the evidence that in the case of Mexico, we cannot draw a line separating clearly the world of crime and the world of the institutions. It is the same thing for us. We are living in that kind of conditions. It is not the criminal assaulting the power or killing the people. It is the authorities mixed with criminals. Are they finally for us becomes the same, it's the same kind of thing, attacking us, killing us, affecting all our lives. Are people planning to engage in more actions? Yes, we are just at the beginning of this battle. This is not the end. It was a very bloody uh, weekend, but this is just the beginning. It was an, a really clearly announced. Uh, we in Oaxaca knew very well that after the elections, that they were waiting for the elections uh, to start this kind of repression. Uh, for us, uh, the teachers are clearly the object now because if they uh, suppress, if they, they uh, uh, win over the, the struggle of the teachers, this will be intimidation by all the other people resisting. 
Uh, that is, uh, then uh, the authorities did not let the lesson uh, of 10 years ago. They are following the script of 10 years ago. And then we are, we learned the lessons. And then we are beginning a very complex strategy for a long struggle. I wanted to go back to 2006, Gustavo, when we spoke to you then, in the midst of a bloody state crackdown on striking school teachers in Oaxaca that sparked a popular uprising against the then-governor, Ulysses Ruiz Ortiz. Over the months, a long rebellion, the residents of Oaxaca turned the city into an autonomous zone. This is you, Gustavo Esteva, speaking 10 years ago about that uprising. Well, the question was uh, that uh, the, the teachers uh, started the, the the strike, uh, as usual, every year they, they are forced to do this kind of strike to get some improvement in the terrible conditions, terrible economic conditions. Uh, but that was not uh, something special. That was the usual thing. Uh, but then, after three weeks of, uh, of the strike in June 14th, uh, they have uh, they suffered a terrible, a stupid, uh, barbaric uh, repression by, by by the police of uh, of Ulysses Ruiz, the governor, uh, and that was the detonator of the movement. Uh, people started to react immediately, joining, uh, supporting, expressing solidarity with the teachers, and expressing the decision to oust the governor. And then uh, this was the detonator of the accumulated discontent of uh, the whole state. Uh, after that, uh, five days later, we have APO, the creation of this uh, assembly of the people of, of Oaxaca. Uh, we have a march of almost a million people. That is a third of the population of the state. Uh, we have every kind of activities after that. With the, That was the consolidation, the expression of a very well-organized discontent of the people. This is a movement without leaders in which the people themselves very well organized with amazing courage and amazing capacity of expressing uh, their, their, their will. Uh, they are organized first to oust this governor and then to change our society, to create a different kind of society. That was you, Gustavo Estevez, 10 years ago. Where has the movement gone? Has the situation changed in this last decade? Well, it has deteriorated. It has not improved in these 10 years. We learned a lot of lessons. The experience is sedimented in the heart and the uh, the minds of the of the people here in Oaxaca, we learned a lot. We will not commit the same mistakes that we committed 10 years ago. Uh, I will add to that uh, story of 10 years ago that after the teachers' mobilization, there was a horrible, horrible uh, media campaign against the teachers. Uh, then the, after that, the repression. And this is exactly what we are seeing today. After the teachers' mobilization, we had this horrible media, media campaign against them, preparing the public opinion for the repression. And then we had the repression this weekend. But we learned the lessons. We are prepared. Basically, one of the things that we are saying, that we are trying to apply in, uh, in the reality, is that uh, David can always win over Goliath if he fights in his own territory. Uh, we are saying that, for example, the teachers has as, his own, as their own territory, the classroom. They can organize the first, the most important struggle in the classroom, trying to bring back real education for the people in Oaxaca. And uh, second, we want also to be in the streets supporting uh, this struggle that is a really a very complex struggle. We are struggling for our life. Our movement has consolidated. We have, for the first time, after lessons of 2006, uh, conversations between the teachers and the civil society. We have uh, something that we call Espacio Civil, civil space, where uh, hundred organizations, uh, grassroots organizations, collectives, community organizations, uh, NGOs, many people are together joining the teachers in this very complex and long struggle. In, this is just the beginning. In 2006, in Oaxaca, gunmen with ties to the Mexican government shot and killed three people, including the U.S. journalist and activist Brad Will. This is his fellow journalist, John Gibbler, speaking about his slain colleague, Brad. He was most interested 
and filming interviews with just the everyday people and the people that he thought their voices would slip through um, the cracks and in international media coverage and not get out to the people that he was hoping would be paying attention to what was happening here in Oaxaca. I saw him in several of the mobile brigades where we joined the people who would commandeer city buses and go around to spray paint government offices. And he was definitely fearless once he'd gotten a feeling for the town and just going wherever the action was. But he was also, I mean, he was also being smart. He was he was hanging out with all the national and the local press corps here who, who know the scene pretty well. But you can only be so smart when paramilitaries jump out of houses with machine guns. John Gibbler speaking back a decade ago in 2006 about Brad Will, the U.S. journalist uh, activist who was killed um, uh, in Oaxaca. And, uh, Gustavo Esteva, you have most recently, last year, the uh, deaths of the student uh, teachers um, uh, of Ayotzinapa. Can you make the linkages? It's a very, there is a very clear linkage. This is uh, an attack, the attack on the people of Ayotzinapa. These young men and women have been basically for 15 years. Uh, they are trying to, dism to dismantle all these schools that are where the sons of the peasants are running to become teachers for the peasants. They are not uh, studying to leave the communities, but to stay in the communities as teachers. And they have been trying to disappear them as part of this uh, general reform of the system of education. They want to dissolve these, uh, these uh, schools. And the students were trying to protest, to express their decision to continue their studies. And uh, they were going to a protest in, uh, around, uh, so, uh, around October the 2nd to commemorate uh, the killing of students in 1968. That is when they were uh, disappeared, attacked by, first by the police uh, and then supposedly uh, transferred to criminals in the, this very open association between the police and the criminals. Uh, then we are seeing the same kind of things against indigenous people, against uh, the education, against real education for the indigenous people. We are seeing very, very kind of link, link between the two, the two kind of things. Mm. So, finally, um, I have before me um, a statement that says, urgent action, uh, civil society of Oaxaca emits humanitarian alert due to armed attack of the state against civilians. Um, the demands right now, Gustavo. Yes, this is the, the, the espacio civil that I was talking about. We, we are expressing our decision with, with an alert. We are really in trouble. We are in a very serious situation. Uh, this is not uh, the end of something, but the beginning of something that is very dangerous for our lives, for all of us, for our condition. Do you know how many people died, were gunned down by the federal police this week? Nine people were literally assassinated. Nine people, this is the last report we have. And 23 are disappeared. Then we don't know if they are still alive or not. And the number wounded? Uh, more than 100 wounded. We have 45 in the hospital and more than 100 wounded. Gustavo Esteva, I want to thank you for being with us, founder of the Universidad de la Tierra, the University of the Earth in Oaxaca, author of many books, including New Forms of Revolution. Gustavo also has been a columnist for the Mexican newspaper La Jornada. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We were speaking to him in Oaxaca, and we'll continue to cover the story. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us. Yeah.